Welcome to What's New. You've been looking at the Nothing Phone 1 for a while now. There's been a lot of hype. There was a reveal event and you're almost ordering one. Well, before you do, here's three reasons why I think the Nothing Phone 1 is almost perfectly configured and almost perfectly positioned in the market, but also three things you must absolutely look out for before you make a purchase decision. Welcome to What's New. Let's get started. Okay, the way I see it, there are three things that nothing has kept in mind while formulating the configuration for their phone one and also positioning it the way they have in the market. Number one is performance. The choice of a Snapdragon 778G Plus I think is absolutely on point because if you were holding a phone and you didn't know if it was a Snapdragon 8 Gen or the 7 Gen, would you really be able to tell a difference? In fact, I'm willing to bet almost nobody will unless there's some niche use cases like gaming over an extended period of time and even then an 8 gen processor would use more battery and have more thermal dissipation needs so a 778g plus seems to be just the right amount of performance that you'll never know that it's not an 8 gen processor but it's not weak enough to be compared with some of the sony xperias in the market around the same price point now you mate that processor with 8 gigs up to 12 gigs of ram and 128 gigs maybe up to 256 gigs of storage and you've got performance that no one's going to complain about Slap on an OLED screen, 120Hz refresh rate, stereo speakers, and that's it. You've got a perfect mid-range of phone that, let's be honest, will do everything a flagship phone will be doing just on performance metrics alone. Now, the second thing is battery life. They've mated the Snapdragon 778G Plus with a 4500 milliampere battery, which is about the same amount of battery you get in a Pixel 6. So given that it's a Snapdragon 778G Plus, I'm guessing you're gonna get some pretty decent battery life out of this, subject to how the operating system actually manages the power and so on. Now, given that it's a stock OS or near stock anyway, I expect it to get properly good battery life. But what's more, they've also added 33 watt fast charging, plus wireless charging and reverse charging. But more importantly, 33 watts is meaningful fast charging. Yes, I know there are 67 watt fast chargers and whatnot, but I think this is a good middle ground. So then you've got performance that's good enough for most people and you've got battery life that's going to be good for a lot of people as well with fast charging. And the third and final thing is pricing. Look, the fact is at the $300 and $350 price point, there are so many smartphones out there that would go toe to toe against the Nothing Phone 1 and probably be able to absolutely spank it in terms of sheer specification. So they resorted to the one thing that they've been concentrating on from the very beginning, design. Say what you want about the Phone 1 or about the Nothing Ear 1, they are strikingly designed and there is a fair bit of attention to detail, starting with that screen with the equal bezels on all sides and the aluminium frame that definitely resembles the iPhone for a good reason and that transparent back which let's face it they must have gone through quite a few design changes to make sure that the back actually looks good when transparent so and I think that's fantastic because if you look at the lower end smartphone market or even the mid-range smartphone market there are a lot of options that look positively horrendous and all of them feel light and plasticky. Even the reasonable contenders at the Nothing Phone's price point, the Samsung A53 series, it's a pretty good value for money phone, but the fact is, it's pretty darn boring as well. Barring maybe the Xperia series, there aren't too many phones that really, really do a great job of looking and feeling premium at the $400 price point. So Nothing stepped in and gave the masses something to covet, something that'll look a little bit different, something that looks and feels premium without jumping jumping to that six, eight hundred dollar, thousand dollar price category. I think that is a fantastic move on their part. And let's face it, the premium pricing for this phone definitely adds to the premium feel of it. There is a very real effect of the price of an object to the perception of luxury of that object. And they definitely know this. So those are three things I think nothing very conscientiously did to both configure and position its device just right in the market. But here are three things that you must absolutely look out for as well before you actually pre-order your own device. Number one is actually the fourth thing that's also super important in smartphones that I didn't mention 
it's the camera. Now we don't have anything to go by. We've got some photo samples, but of course they would curate that to show you the best. But I don't know if you noticed, but the Nothing Phone 1 reveal event was actually shot on a Nothing Phone. And to that extent, we can get a pretty good idea of its video chops, at least as of right now. There's one thing I noticed and I noticed predominantly was that wherever there were highlights, so bright white lighting through windows, for example, where that was interacting with say the silhouette of someone's face or a window sill, there was some severe purple fringing, basically chromatic aberration, the likes of which should not happen in this day and age on any smartphone camera. And just to prove a point, this video is shot on a Pixel 6 and you see what I mean. There's some pretty harsh highlights there. It's maintaining HDR pretty well, which I don't know if the phone was specifically configured not to do because it was an indoor event, but it should be able to maintain better HDR than that. And it should not have chromatic aberration. That's something to look out for. Maybe this will be fixed in a firmware update, but this is definitely something you should look out for when you watch the reviews on your favorite YouTube reviewers. Now, this channel is still far too small to receive one of those units, but maybe if you subscribe, we'll get there one day. Now, there's two other things that I absolutely have to mention. Number one is about that fast charging. Now, 33 watt fast charging is really good. The Pixel 6 caps out at, I think, 21 watts and it does 0 to 50% of a 4600 milliampere battery in 30 minutes, which means the Nothing Phone 1, in theory, should be able to do it in, let's say, 20 minutes. 20 minutes to 50% charge is really not that bad. Maybe 23 minutes is what I'm guessing. If it's even shorter than that, then fantastic. But if it's running Android OS, and it is, then it probably is going to kick into trickle charging at some point. And it really comes down to how they handle this. Now the Pixel 6 goes into trickle charging after 50%. If the Nothing Phone does that, well, then it might well take you over an hour and a half to actually charge the device to 100. But if they just go a little more aggressive, let's say 70, 75% at full 33 watts, and then it goes into trickle charging, then that means that you could technically go from zero to 70% in about 30 minutes or 30 five minutes at most, which means a quick 30 minute charge or even a 25 minute charge will give you enough to get through an entire day or at least a working day. And that would make all the difference to a lot of people in terms of actual user experience. That would be fantastic without compromising the overall battery life too much. And the third and final thing that you must absolutely look out for is that screen. Now it's an OLED screen, 120 hertz, 240 hertz touch sampling rate. It's got an in-display fingerprint sensor, which we don't know how fast or how well that works. It's also got Got face unlock with the forward facing cameras and stereo speakers in front. So your media consumption experience is going to be pretty darn good in my opinion. But the peak brightness is 1200 nits, but the typical average brightness is only 500 nits. That's not bad, but it's nowhere close to the best in the market. And in direct sunlight, I can tell you from experience that that might end up being on the slightly duller side. May not be a deal breaker, but again, something to watch out for, something to ask your favorite YouTuber reviewers about. And there you have it. I think it is a masterpiece of a phone in that they have focused on things that are really, really important. Overall then, I think this is going to be a really good phone, but there are some things, some really small finesse items that they have to look out for because the competition, things like the Pixel 6a or the Pixel 6, in fact, after a bit of a discount, all of them very strong contenders that are just nipping at the margins here. So something to look out for. Hopefully you've got some value out of this. I'll see you in the next one. Stay happy, stay peaceful, stay colorful. Namaste.